Petty Cash, how does it operate? Well, clearly this video will provide you with a, a, a short overview of a Petty Cash system in a business. Um, what, it, what its purpose is, how to set it up, how to check it, how, and how to replenish it. Um, petty Cash is an example of an internal control designed to protect the assets of a business, and in this case, the asset is cash. So the purpose of Petty Cash, again, an internal control to protect cash while enabling the payment of transactions that would be impractical to pay for by other means. So we can see there's three components to it. It's, petty Cash is really about efficiency. You want to protect your cash, but you don't want to do it to such an extent that it's inefficient. So we put in a mechanism in place that we believe is efficient for small amounts of cash. So how does it operate? Well, to, to do this, a business keeps a small amount of cash on hand, and we typically refer to this as the petty cash float, to pay for certain types of transactions. So what are those types of transactions? Um, well, they're typically uh, low in value, um, and transactions that are not really be practical to pay for in another way. It might be a staff member goes out to buy coffee or tea or to buy low value items or um, a freight courier drops off an item and they need to be paid right on the spot. So you've got a small amount of cash on hand to pay for these transactions. And what it does, it moves the authority for the payment to the person that's most likely to have to pay the transaction. So that's typically your frontline staff. So you might have a parcel delivered to your frontline staff, they collect it, they've got to pay the $12.50 freight. So we can't go through the whole process of getting a cheque written and signed by many people, approved by the board, whatever the process is for the payment of $12.50. So that's why we have a petty cash system. It's often referred to as an impress system. Now, what is an impress system? Well, we'll see that as we go along. So let's look at setting up the petty cash system. So what has happened? Well, I guess you go out and you buy a tin, or maybe you need to set up the petty cash first so you've got the money to go out and buy the tin. But you have a cash check, you and it's written out through the normal system. So if, if your approval process is that um, checks are written and approved by the board and signed by the general manager or whatever level of authorization, the petty cash system, um, the, the, the setup of the petty cash system will go through that process. And then after the check's written, the check is cashed and the money is taken and put in the float. So typically this is going to be some type of lockable box. The journal entry that would be made, and this would have been made through the normal system, would be debit petty cash, which is an asset, credit cash at bank, which is an asset. So your, the whole assets of cash don't change, it's just that you move some of the cash from your bank into the tin. How do you operate it? Well, we've pretty much got a handle on that already. Um, relevant transactions are processed, are processed through the pretty cash system. So what happens? Someone comes to the front counter, um, deliver a parcel, as we've been through this, they've, they need $12.50 paid for the delivery on the, par on the parcel. So $12.50 is taken from the, the cash box, given to the person, um, and in the box, petty cash box we replace it with a pre-numbered voucher so you'll have some vouchers sitting in there that are pre-numbered um, and often in duplicate so a copy stays in the in the uh, voucher book and you write out you know amount twelve dollars fifty um, account would be freight you know, maybe some comments to you know receivement receiving of a, a parcel and that will be signed by the person that's authorised. So, and that could be a number of people could be authorised to have petty cash. Um, ideally, though, um, it should only be one person that uh, that does petty cash, because that's other, otherwise the the internal control is watered down. But often in businesses. Um, a number of people are giving access to the petty cash box and 
restrictions only become tighter if there's a problem. And what's the problem? I.e. you count it up and you find money short. But if you continually operate in the system and and the the vouchers are always there balanced, then um, the system may be working quite well. Checking the balance, so what happens, so periodically the value of all the vouchers are added up and uh, let's say you had a, um, a $200 um, petty cash balance, you add up the total of all the vouchers and they say they're $120, so you would therefore expect to find $80 in cash still in the tin. So the total of vouchers plus cash should always equal $200. So if it doesn't, if the value of vouchers and cash doesn't equal the petty cash amount, then you need to investigate why. So then we get to the stage of replenishing the petty cash, which would happen at that stage. In this example, as we said, hold on, we've got $120 of vouchers, so we will write out a check for $120. And we'll also need to divide up that $120 to say what it was paid for. So yeah, there we'd have to put the account codes on items. So we might have uh, freight, you know, $80, coffee, $25, milk, $15, total $120. And so that would be the journal entry that would go in through our normal system would be you know, debit, expense 1, freight 80, debit expense 2, coffee 25, debit expense 3, milk 15, credit cash at bank 120. Then um, this item would be go and be cashed and get the $120 back. The $120 would go back into the petty cash float and um, the petty cash balance would now be back to its full balance of, in this example, we're looking at $200. And that's what has been recorded in your books, in your balance sheet, would say petty cash $200. Now, this process now repeats itself until the next time the petty cash is balanced. There is a short overview of petty cash.